We're not here tonight to be looked at. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to tell somebody, losing up. Tell another one, losing up. Thank you, Jesus. Tell as many as you can tell tonight. Tell someone, losing up. Don't be too hot tight. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. We are going to pray tonight before we get into the word of the Lord. We're going to rebuke this power of sickness in our midst. We are going to use everyone afflicted right now with one sickness of the other as point of contact. Any kind of sickness, no one is allowed in the body of Christ. Praise the Lord. Are you with me tonight? Yes. So we are going to pray. I want, I want to show you something in, in scriptures. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Any kind of sickness, none is allowed in our midst. Amen. Because Jesus died, shed his blood, and paid the price already. And the Bible tells us, by his stripes you were healed. You and I were already healed before sickness came. So, sickness is a lie of the enemy. So, we are going to pray that in the name of Jesus, we rebuke the power and the spirit of sickness of any sort, small one or big ones. We rebuke the power, the operations tonight in the lives and in the body of all our members. We curse the spirit of sickness we cause the spirit of infirmity. Lift up your voice and ask the Lord in prayer. We rebuke the power of sickness from the life of every member of Dominion Life. We rebuke the spirit of sickness and infirmity. Lift up your voice and pray. Open your mouth and pray tonight. We rebuke the spirit of weakness. We rebuild the spirit of sickness and weakness. You foul spirit of sickness. I come against you tonight in the name of Jesus. You foul spirit of sickness. I come against you in the name of Jesus. You foul spirit of sickness. I come against you in the name of Jesus. You foul spirit of sickness. I come against you in the name of Jesus. You foul spirit of infirmity. Open your mouth and pray. I rebuke you tonight. I rebuke you tonight. I rebuke you tonight. I rebuke you tonight. You foul spirit of sickness. Open your mouth and pray tonight. Somebody open your mouth. I rebuke the spirit of sickness. I rebuke the spirit of infirmity. Somebody open your mouth. Somebody open your mouth. Lift up your voice and pray. Open your mouth and pray tonight. Lift up your voice and pray. The spirit of sickness, the spirit of infirmity, the blood of Jesus is against you. The spirit of sickness, the spirit of infirmity, the blood of Jesus is against you. You foul spirit of sickness. In Jesus' mighty name. We thank God for the message God gave us during the first course. The king, there are two most powerful kingdoms in this world. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. The kingdom of God is the kingdom of light. The kingdom of Satan is the kingdom of darkness. Now, let me say this to you. If 
you and I can be spiritually awake in our sleep. I doubt if the enemy will be able to do anything in anyone's life. Because the operations of Satan needs darkness. They need darkness. Pastor Peter was saying it. Many people slept and woke up and woke up to an infirmity and before you know it, kill them. Things happen in the realms of the spirit. That's why when you sleep, you see things, you see negative things and some of you have seen some things that became a reality in the night. Every evil happens at night. Now, that the word of God is the light of God. So when you are full of revelations of the word, so that revelation beams light into operations of darkness. Now I'm trying to establish one thing tonight. Everything happens. Now, how many of us can testify tonight that the things you see at night when you sleep, you don't see them daytime. You think it's coincidence. Satan is the kingdom, is the king of the kingdom of darkness. Like Pastor Peter was saying, if we know what we can do at night, church people will request for more, more night of miracles. We ask for more night of miracle. If some of us know what happens at night, you'll be afraid to sleep. That is the truth. You will be afraid. I've seen people in my life uh, uh, in ministry that are afraid to sleep because of what will happen at night. Nothing happens daytime, but let them go to bed at night. Everything broke. I have seen, I've had to pray for people that they are more tired when they wake up in the morning than any time in their life. Let them work 16 hours, not as tired as when they wake up in the morning. Why? Because they fought all night. Because they fought all night. We need to get serious. We need to get serious. They fought all night. Then as they operate in darkness, you can imagine when that is when you are shooting your own arrows. Pastor Peter said, some of, some, of, some of the things they programmed to do tonight, they can't do it because we are gathered here praying in the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we are going to pray again. We're going to rebuke the spirit of infirmity. None should be sick in our midst. Amen. No matter what is going on in the world, there is no scriptural backing for any seasonal sickness. It's just not in scripture. Now, science will say when you reach a certain age, you will see something is a lie. That is science. This is not science. This is the word of God. So, we are going to pray to enforce the power of God's word to neutralize every other thing in nature that is against our peace. So we are going to pray again. Simple prayer. I rebuke the spirit of sickness and infirmity over every member of dominion life. I rebuke the spirit of sickness. You foul spirit of sickness and infirmity. The blood of Jesus is against you tonight. You foul spirit of sickness. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is against you tonight. Come on, lift up your voice and pray. 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 Open your mouth and pray. You foul spirit of sickness, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus from our midst. Long disease, the blood of Jesus is against you. It's the spirit of cancer, the blood of Jesus is against you. The spirit of back pain, bone pain, spine pain, the blood is against you. 
Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Jesus mighty name I hope we are all praying we are going to pray again Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 19 he says I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the house I did not say to the seed of Jacob seek me in vain I the Lord speak righteousness I declare things that are right God is saying as you seek me, you serve me, there is something in there for you. Amen. We are going to pray tonight, whatever makes your service unto God lacks proof. Hear me, when you don't doubt, when you lack proof, people will question your Christianity. When they, will, they might even say you are the reason behind your problems. When you lack proofs, people will even doubt if you are born again. So we are going to pray God said there is something in it. So that thing in it for you and I, we're going, in some situations, our sense might be our own hindrance. So you are going to pray, Lord, if I am the hindrance to my own, uh, my own proof, show me and help me. But my life must showcase your power. I must have proofs. I must have results. Lift up your voice and begin to pray tonight. Lord, I pray for proofs. I pray for result. 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 I pray for proofs. I pray for results. I pray for proofs. I pray for results. I pray for proofs. I pray for results. Lift up your voice and ask the Lord in prayer. Lord, baptize your people with proofs and testimonies tonight. I pray for proofs in the lives of everyone. Results. Results. Results, results, results. In Jesus' mighty name. After the redemption of our soul, redemption gave us a lot of things. The Bible says good things that accompany salvation. One of it is good health. We have secured that in prayer because I know God has answered that prayer. Another thing in redemption that God did for us is he took care, he, he took care of our poverty. People of God, embrace revelation of the world. Don't be destroyed by religion. It is the spirit of, the, of religion that makes you super sensitive when we pray and talk about money in the church. That is the truth, it's the spirit of religion. 67% of the parables of Jesus, 67% were on economics, money, and resources. 67% on finances, investment. So, we are going to pray. There is nothing wrong with money. It's the abuse of it that is wrong. But if you have it and you won't lose your head, there is nothing wrong with it. The, everyone will rejoice. So we are going to pray. And one thing is important. Let me share this with you, which I didn't want to share before. I told the choir because I met with them. Dr. Mahmoud just left, right? I will continue to say it. That man is one of these is the most simplest the simplest person to host that I've seen in my life in ministry in terms of people don't care what you give them we keep, keep, kept them in the hotel he did not incur a dime extra charge on the room we told them you can eat 
Yeah, that's fine, full service hotel. You know what he ate throughout? McDonald's and Pada Express. That's what he ate throughout. McDonald's, Pada Express, McDonald's. You know, when people see him on TV, people say, oh, he's collecting people's money. Hmm. God will forgive a lot of people for what they don't know. When we give him the little, we can give it to him. He told me, he said, Pastor, I didn't expect this. I know you just moved here. All this was going on. He said, will you take it and pay for the carpet? I said, I didn't tell you we are going to do carpet in the first place. We'll do our carpet. Don't worry about our carpet. <laughs> he, he, and by the way, we have bought the carpet. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, don't you like this place? Yes. Now, I am trying to communicate something to you. He said, I have not told the seed of Jacob to seek me in vain. There is something in it for you. But because of religion, because Dr. Middog is, is I've, God will forgive a lot of people. That's what I would say. It's excitement. What do you think we can possibly, you know where we will, you should have been preaching for last weekend, Dr. Rob Parsley. <laughs> you know what he said? He said, I'm grateful to God that I obey God to be in San Ramon. He said, I am grateful to God that I obey to be in San Ramon. We are going to, I, I, I believe God sent him for this season. If I tell you this, I don't care if you believe now or if you don't believe. On Wednesday, somebody walked to me and offered me a land. Wow. On Wednesday, on Wednesday, I still haven't recovered from it. I see, I'm still, di that's why I kept it, I, I'm still dissecting it. I'm still trying to see, God, what is going on. On Wednesday, now, he was talking about territorial. Do you know that all the fight in the Middle East today is about land? The first great man of God that ministered about land on the pulpit that I had was uh, late Benson Dahosa. The importance of land, the importance is just more than land to build a house. You can, your, your land determines your dominion. Whatever is your land is your domain. But it's deeper than that. So it, it, it say, it, 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 that's why Dr. Mito call it territorial anointing. On Wednesday, somebody walked to me and offer me a piece of land. Hallelujah. Now, I have made up my mind and you have had it in my mouth. The easiest way for you to deceive me, tell me God tells you, I will do it. If God didn't tell you, you and God will answer. But even if you say it by your own doing, if I do it because in the name of the Lord, God will say honor his name. If anybody, see, in this church, nobody comes on our pulpit anyhow. That looks prideful, but I'm sorry, that's just what we have. But if you can be foolish enough to follow me as your pastor here, if I bring somebody here, you better obey and do what they say. If somebody preaches here, or I am able to sit under someone and I stay under the administration anywhere, if I don't agree, I won't stay. But if I stay, anything they ask me to do, I will do. There was a time, I think I was sharing this with you or someone about a week ago. We had a guest minister in Oakland many, many years back that took an offering. I didn't agree with it, but God blessed me out of it. I questioned it in my spirit. But I did it anyway because he said God said. Even in my own belief, I got a great testimony out of it. That's why I said somehow some of us is our whole mind that is hindering us. God wants to do something, but God doesn't need your mind. We are going to pray tonight 
Lord, whatever is holding down my proofs, even if it is my mind, take it out of the way. I need proofs. Baptize me. Flood my life with proofs of salvation. With, with, with flood of resort. Promotions. Finances. Blessings. Liftings. Good things. Houses. Cars. Blessings. Showcase your power in my life. Proofs. Open your mouth and ask the Lord in prayer. I must have proofs. I must have results. 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 Lift up your voice and ask the Lord. Open your mouth and pray tonight. Open your mouth and pray tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you tonight. Because I know you have had us. And I know that you have done it. Lord, I thank you for the manifestations of your power. Do more with us tonight. We will give you all the glory. In Jesus' precious name. Let's put our hands together for Jesus as we take our seats. Hallelujah. You are welcome tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Before I get into the word of God, I want to make one or two quick announcements. Uh, Deacon Jerry has been appointed as the operational head of the media department. He does not replace Brother Habe. They will work together, but Brother Habe would work mostly with the technical uh, part of it because his hands are full right now. Now that we are even back on the moment of breakthrough. So when it comes to the day-to-day -day running of the, that department, the, the King Jerry is going to be doing that. And the Sister Chica, we have, have carved out the teens department out of the youth department. Because I realized that uh, in the youth department, we had a 14-year-old, we had a 25-year-old. What a 14-year-old needs is not what a 25-year-old needs. Is that all right? 25-year-old old enough to give back to the 14-year-old. <laughs> and we put them in the same department. So that was wrong. So sister, we carve out the teen department from teen to teen. And, uh, <laughs> and Sister Chica will be coordinating that department from henceforth. <laughs> Hallelujah. She has a rich experience in teen ministry. To God be all the glory for the blessing. Hallelujah. So if you are a teenager, Sister Chica is your new head of department. We will the older ones, we will get back to that eventually. Tonight, let's go into the word of the Lord. I am speaking on the power of faith to live the overcoming life. The month of July has been most eventful. We thank God for the prophetic focus for the month of July, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. This is the victory that has overcome. It is by faith that we overcome our challenges. Church, I want to tell you something tonight, again, that all we have in this church is faith. And the reason why I say it is because they say the secret of people are in their stories. So the more story you hear, the more secret that is revealed. If you come around me, we talk, you, know what, you will know what I am thinking ahead of time. I told someone today, I was speaking with Molly in the office, then I said it won't be long that we are going to buy a big church building in San Ramon, and uh, it will be in the territory that is a church. We won't share parking with anyone. We can do whatever we want on that land. Now, 
watch out. I'm saying it now like I always say it. And we will see it like we always see it. So the reason why I'm saying this is what are you saying into your life? The Bible says the just shall live by faith. How do you know if you have faith or if you don't have faith? By what you say. Be your own judge. By the words, not what you are saying religiously, but what you are saying when you became confused, when things are not looking good. Your faith is not determined by what you say when I ask you to make confession of faith. Because that one, you have no choice. If you don't make that one, I will call the intercessory on you. <laughs> but what are you saying when you are by yourself? When you are on the field of play in the battles of life? That is what determines your faith, people of God. That is the measure of your faith. You can have faith and keep a closed mouth. I've said it in my, in, in, in my, in my heart. No, it has to come from your mouth. What are you saying? How much are you speaking into your future? What are you saying? The Bible says, the just shall live by faith. Speaking faith, speaking what the Bible says ahead of time is living the lifestyle of faith. What are you saying? For example, let me tell you another way to tell you if you have faith. If you make confessions, I'm not talking about when you are praying, because when you are praying, you can't confess negative things. But if it comes out in your mouth in the last one year, that things are hard, you don't have faith. If it has come out of your mouth in the last one year, what am I saying, one year? In the last five years, that the economy is not good, you don't have faith. Because you see the economy, you don't see God's word. If it comes out of your mouth that things aren't going well in any sphere of life, you don't have faith because you believe what you say. And if you quote what anybody quotes to you that is negative, you don't have faith because that is what you see. So we need to be sure where we stand in the school of faith. Now, the Bible says we'll walk by faith, not by sight, for one simple reason. Not by sight, because what you will see by sight will be negative. There is nothing that you will see. Sight means the realms of the senses. What you hear, what you feel, what you smell, what they tell you, what you drink, what looks real. Now, for we walk by faith, not by sight. So you are not supposed to live your life by those reports that are negative. That is the lifestyle of faith. Why? Because nothing will stimulate your faith. Nothing will stimulate your faith out of TV. Out of the news. No matter how breaking the news is. It's not going to help your faith. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, the Bible said, the just shall live by faith. I'm talking about faith that you and I need to live an overcoming life. If you don't have faith, you can live the overcoming life. Even though God had made provisions for it. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in Psalms 103 verse 7, He made known His ways to Moses, His heart to the children of Israel. His ways to Moses, His heart. His ways. Let's forget about the heart for some time. Let's pay attention to His ways. The way of faith, the Bible says. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When you know his ways. Now, Dr. Mahmoudok said something. He said, the person of Jesus will lead you to redemption. Fine. He said, his principle is what determines the life that you live here. His ways, his principles. God always operates by principles. And his principles are his ways. He operates... 
his principles, how to do it, and until you embrace it. And we're talking about the way of faith tonight. Your knowledge of him will determine the life that you live in the hand. So it is never enough to stop at being a Christian. You must have understanding, embraces knowledge. Praise the Lord. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 1 and verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God for salvation for everyone who believes. Now, when you can live the life of faith, because for whatever reason, you are ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Because faith is the gospel of Christ. And it says, for I am not ashamed. Now, for example, if you can declare, I cannot be sick because Jesus died for me. You are afraid of saying that because of what people will say. Now you are ashamed of him. Praise the Lord. Now, he says... Everyone who believes for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it, in the gospel of Christ, in faith, he said, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. Now, what is God's righteousness? God's righteousness is his provision that you and I don't deserve. Now the Bible says it is revealed from faith to faith. So growing from faith to faith opens you up for his blessing. It is revealed from, so without faith we disqualify ourselves from those blessings. That says from faith to faith the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Without faith your life and result are limited to your own ability. Because faith is what brings God's ability into our lives. Now, yes, God has made the provisions, but we must meet the conditions. The conditions of faith. The Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 3 from verse 10, For as many as are of the works of the law are under the law, under the cause, for it is written, causes everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of law to do them, but that no one is justified by law in the sight of God is evident. For the judge shall live by faith, yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law, having become a cause for us, for it is written, cause is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Yet there is a promise, yet there is a provision, but without faith they are inaccessible. It is by faith that you assess all now all the blessings of redemptions. Without faith, you can't touch them. Yes, you are aware of them, but it is by faith we receive the delivery of them. Galatians 3 says in verse 23, but before faith came, we were kept under guard by the law, kept for the faith which would afterward be revealed. So the new life, the life of a Christian, is the lifestyle of faith. It is by faith that we overcome. Now, why? Because you will go through the bombs of life. You will go through situations. But we overcome by faith. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32, the Bible says, And what more shall I say, for the time will fail me, to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, also of David and Samuel and the prophet, who through faith subdued kingdoms. <laughs> People subdued kingdoms, nations by faith. Walked righteousness, obtained promises, 
stop the mouth of lions. By faith, you can stop every mouth of every lion in your life. Let me say, by faith, they stop the mouth of lions. Quench the violence of fire. I pray tonight in the precious name of Jesus that every violent fire against your life will be quenched tonight in Jesus' name. And every spiritual lion, every lion, every mouth of any lion against your life, against your health, against your finances, against your family will be stopped in Jesus' name. Don't say, by faith, they stop the mouth of lion. No power in heaven and or in hell can resist the authority of faith. That's why they say, the just shall live by faith, so that you and I can live an unstoppable life. He says, escape the edge of the sword by faith. Out of weakness were made strong many, became valiant in battle, turned to fly the armies of the aliens by faith. All these testimonies are outstanding and unbelievable result of absolute faith. When faith in God is absolute, now result and exploit is their inevitable. Praise the Lord. I believe that most of the times when we think nothing is happening, it's only because we don't have faith. Now, you can have faith and don't live the lifestyle of faith. So when you see if you live by God's word alone, you know you are living the lifestyle of faith. But if you live by common sense, that is contrary to the life of faith. Hallelujah. Because common sense tells you when you feel pain in your body, it tells you you are sick and you embrace it. But by faith, no, I cannot be sick. Not that I'm not sick, I cannot be sick. Is somebody hearing me? That is a lifestyle of faith. In James chapter 2 from verse 17, the Bible says, Does also faith by itself if he does not have works, is dead. So if faith lacks work, it's dead faith. But someone, verse 18, will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. Now, the very first work of faith is the confession of your mouth. That is the first step into the lifestyle of faith. By what you say, the life that you live, when you speak, when things are in the contrary. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13 says, And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. Somebody say, I believe. Therefore I spoke. So I will say, we also believe and therefore speak. I believe, therefore I speak. So if you are not speaking, then you don't believe. Is somebody hearing me? Let's outgrow the level of what people will say. In this kingdom, authority is in our mouths. And the bigger your mouth is to, to speak faith, the bigger your testimony and your experience in exploit. So who cares what people say when you are confessing faith? Who cares? You cannot believe and don't speak. Everything that speaks negative to you, every opposition, every resistance is an opportunity to speak faith. You release something. Don't let it go without you saying something. Is somebody hearing me? You, you get to a point that you treasure speaking back to things that are negative. 
you say things when there are pressures everywhere. It becomes the life that you live. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 16, you know, I read from Hebrews, talk about those that subdue kingdoms, stop them out of the lions. The Bible says in Hebrews 13 and 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, in Ephesians 6 and 16, it says, Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. The shield of faith. So, faith is a defense. Faith is our defense. Somebody say, faith is my defense. Faith. Let me say, above all, he said, he said, above all, now he was talking about spiritual armor from verse 12, from verse 10. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Then in verse 16, he said, above all, taking the shield of faith. So in spiritual armor, faith is your defense. So by faith, some things can happen around you. Faith defenses you from attack. Faith, when you live the lifestyle of faith, even when you are sleeping, naturally, your spirit isn't sleeping. Is somebody hearing me? When you are sleeping, your spirit won't sleep because the spirit of faith is at work in your life. Let me say, the shield of faith Victory in life is, in, I'm talking about victorious living. I'm not talking about managing to live, which most of us do, and we call it the life of victory. I'm talking about living in absolute dominion. I'm talking about living in authority, spiritual authority. It is unattainable without faith. So faith is not a really, faith is a tangible spiritual force. Now, one life that God gave all of us is the dominion life, which the Bible tells us from, Exod uh, from Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28. We thank God that's where our name came from. Now, it's our heritage, but that dominion is insecure without the shield of faith. Because Satan will always attack your, your, your territory. So you need faith to secure your domain. Faith. The Bible says the shield of faith. The shield of faith. When things happen negatively to us, church, listen to this. The Bible was written before all of us were born. Is that right? There is one powerful scripture in the Bible, very powerful, that we take lightly. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 28, let us read together. Romans 8 and verse 28, we want to go, let us read. One more time, let's read louder. One more time, louder, let us read. That all things work together for good to those that love God. But according, that things are going wrong in your life, it doesn't mean you are going down. The Bible says, all things work together for good to those that love the Lord. It's a lifestyle of faith. Some things won't come right until they go wrong. God will not begin to fix some things in your life until they all fall apart in the first place. Let me say, all things work together for good. He wasn't talking about good things. He was talking about bad things. All things, in other words, those things that look bad, those things that are negative, let me say, work together for good to those that love the Lord. 
When you have this revelation, some things will happen in your life. Yes, thank God. No wonder David declared, it is good that I have been afflicted, that I may know your status. One translation said, the suffering you brought for me was good for me. It helped me to pay attention to your loss. All things work together for good. Why do you give up? Why do you grow weary because you have challenges? That is something to overcome. You will never have a testimony without a resistance of the enemy. Somebody say, I will overcome. I will overcome. I will win my battles. I will overcome my challenges. In the name of Jesus. The Bible tells me, and I believe it. All things work together for good for those that love the Lord. All things will work together for me in the name of Jesus from this moment. All things will work together for my good from this moment. Everything will work together for my good. Disappointment, pain. Sickness. sickness. Somebody asked me, so how does sickness work together for your good? Because you will experience God's power like never before in your life. And that, that, that power will never leave you the same. In medical science, some of you medical people, you know this in case I don't say it right. But I know what I'm saying. There is a way that if someone is afflicted with a disease and that disease, I'm talking about big diseases, and your body fights it by itself, not through medicine, your body fights it and fights it and fights it. When you overcome that sickness, you know what happened? You can never catch it again. How many of us know that in science? You can never catch it. I'm not talking about headache. That's not what I'm talking. I'm talking about blood diseases. Yeah. That's what science says. Is that right? Yes, I know you're a nurse. Is that right? Yes. For example, if somebody catches HIV and by any act of miracle, the body fights it. You know, God is a God of wisdom. God created us. He Put immune systems in our body, things to fight sicknesses. Now, hear me. Every time you are afflicted with sicknesses, it's because your immunity is down. That's what science says. Listen, if your body by any heart fights HIV by itself, and by any reason the doctors found out that you caught it, no treatment, but your body fought it. If they if you drink HIV infected blood, you can't catch it again in your life. That is true. Do you understand that? Listen to me. God can use sickness to put his power in your life. Because by the time he finishes with that infirmity, no other infirmity will be able to have anything to do with your life. So when the Bible says all things work together for good to those that love the Lord. One man was sick in the Bible. They asked the Lord. They said, is this sickness, is it unto death? Is this sickness, is it because his father or his mother sin? He said, no. It is that the power and the name of God might be glorified. I know I have in house tonight that those that are going through some afflictions, but those afflictions, they won't bring you down. It is that the power of God might be glorified in your life in the name of Jesus. All things, the Bible says, work together for those that love the Lord. As long as you remain in the love of God, nothing will work to your disadvantage. But we have, to, it is the lifestyle of faith that we have to live. Praise the Lord. In 1 Corinthians, the Bible says something that complements that. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. 
No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. How many of us will sincerely say something tonight? You are going through some situation and you feel like all oh, the problem of this one, your own is the biggest. That is when Satan wants to keep you in bondage. The Bible says, no temptation, no challenge, no sickness, no pain has come to you. It is as common to man. But God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able? Some say, I am able to overcome my challenges. I am able to come out. I will find my way of escape in the precious name of Jesus. Why? Because Satan will never cease to throw darts into your life. Sickness is a dart of the devil. Pain, brokenness, breaking down emotionally, mind challenges, they are darts of the enemy. Satan will throw whatever he knows can get you. Praise the Lord. You know why it's not even good to live in fear is this. Satan always uses things that you fear the most to attack you. He doesn't throw to you what you don't care about. Someone that is always afraid of sickness, of death, Satan will always throw little, little things around them because that gets them down. Folks like that, if they don't have money in their pocket, they don't care. They're going on. They know the money will come. And some people even know that finances is your weakness. No, even if the leg is not working, they don't care. But just let the account read low. The whole week is gone. React to everyone. That is who Satan is. Praise the Lord. Those are the darts of the enemy. Darts. But the Bible said, taking the shield of faith. So the shield of faith can defend you against every dart of the enemy. Praise the Lord. Second Corinthians says, Thank you, Jesus. And he said to me, Second Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9. I'm reading from verse 9. My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. You know what that means? How many of us are at a stage? at some point, one area of life that you think you are really down. He says, my strength is sufficient for you because my strength is made per perfect in weakness. Now, when you get to a point that you are really weakened, it is time to turn it over to God because his strength works perfect when you acknowledge your helplessness. That's what that scripture is talking about. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So you, you know what Paul was saying? Since his strength is made perfect in my weakness, if when I am sick is when I experience his power, then let me be sick a lot so that I can have a lot of his power in my life. And God's power don't go and leave you the same. He said, I would rather boast in my infirmities. So because I know the more they attack, the more the power of God will flood my life. Is somebody hearing me? So that you are under an attack is not the end of the story. The other side of it is that the power of God will begin to flood your life. Somebody say, Lord, touch me with your power tonight. Reach out to me with your power. Open your mouth and ask the Lord. Lord, reach out to me in your power. Power to heal, power to deliver. Reach out to me with your power. Reach out to me with your power. 
Lord, I open myself to you tonight. I am open for your touch. I am open for your power. We become frustrated in life when we strive to do everything in our own ability. The Bible says, without me, John 15 and 5, you can do nothing. Without me, without him, we can do nothing. And in Psalms 127, verse 1 and 2, unless the Lord builds the house, the labor in vain will build it. The reason why people get into depression when they are tired is because you only try to accomplish by yourself. The Bible says, unless the Lord builds the house, turn your challenges over unto God. Live in the lifestyle of faith. Praise the Lord. Faith is God's power that is available to all of us. So it is not a spiritual doctrine. It is not a spiritual thing. It's not a spiritual psychology. Faith is a tangible force in the realms of the spirit. I'm saying, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. In Mark chapter 11, there is a story here. Now in the morning, the day before, Jesus caused the fig tree. I believe we know the story. The next day, in the morning, Mark 11 and 20, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you caused has withered away. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God, for as surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. I began this message by talking about what you say, what you see. You don't wait till you see it before you say it. You may never see it. You say it because you saw it in God's word and you want it in your life. And Jesus says, when you say unto this mountain, be removed, go into the sea, and if you don't doubt, if you have that kind of mouth, you can also use the mouth to cause things into your life. Nothing is missing in your life until you don't see anything. Anything you see, you can become. Is somebody hearing me tonight? Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. So we need to consciously make effort to grow our faith. Because faith is in sizes. So faith needs your ability. But say faith comes by hearing and hearing. Romans 10 and 17, the word of God. The more you hear, the more your faith grows. The more you, some of you now, if you call, get out of this door, you see Satan, you're going to punch him. Because your faith has grown to some point. At some other time, you see him, you're going to run. Is that right? So faith grows. The more you hear the word of God, the more you are growing in faith. Hallelujah. Hear me, that you have faith today does not mean you will always have faith. So the important thing is this. May the devil not come when your faith is down. May the challenge, may the opposition not come the day your faith is in hibernation. So we continue to hear the word of faith. That's why you study God's word every day. You listen to God's word every day because you don't know when Satan will strike. Let me show you something in the Bible that blew me today. 
Thank you, Jesus. In Acts chapter 6 and verse 8, the Bible says, And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders. He did wonders. He did miracle wonders among the people. But one day, his spiritual antenna, antenna were down. The time he was doing these wonders, nobody could arrest him. Do you know what I'm saying? During those miracles, they were there. They saw it. They couldn't touch him. But one day, his faith was asleep. The Bible says, why men slept? Why men slept? He was sleeping spiritually. They stoned him. That's why you must continue to strive to grow your faith. To grow your faith. When you are growing your faith, you are growing your defense, you are growing your shield, you are growing your exploit. He did miracles. Let's say he did wonders among the people. But the same Stephen was arrested and stoned. May the enemy not come. No, that is not the prayer. The prayer should be, may your faith never be down in your life. So faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. Firstly, you grow your faith by hearing the word. Number two, you grow your faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. Jude chapter 1 and verse 20. Jude 1 and 20. Let's read together. I want to go. It shows you don't even know the scripture in the first place. Thank you, Jesus. The people in the media department, they should be careful. Jude chapter 1, verse 20, let us read. One more time, let us read. One more time, let us read. One more time, let us pray. One more time, let us read. Again, let us read. You know when the battery of your car is not working well? If you have not run the car for some time, you are likely going to push. Or you're going to jump start and God will help you if you have cables around. Is that right? Yeah. When you don't charge your faith batteries by praying in tongues, the battery could be dead when the devil comes knocking. And that is how Satan is able to have access into our lives. Yes, you are a Christian. Yes, you've been in the church. But when he came, your battery you have not charged for a long time. I don't think any Christian should live without praying in tongues any day. Every day. I'm not talking about church. You know we don't do church every day unless you agree with me to also start tonight from, from this moment. <laughs> Somebody already mounted a lot of obstacles. Don't, don't do that. Don't, that can be God. <laughs> I don't think, I think we're going to insert a prayer meeting in the course of the one weekly service. I don't think any Christian should live any day in this world that we have spiritual challenges. Don't let us wait till things go wrong before we begin to pray. Let me say, why men slept? Satan can strike if you are spiritually awake. He can strike. Now, if a stranger comes to slap you, Pastor John, 
<laughs> you even dodge it before I get close to you. <laughs> now, but if by any act your eyes are closed, you won't even know what hit you. <laughs> That's why the Bible says, Jesus said, Why men slept? Why men slept? Why men slept? My prayer is that you will not be sleeping in the days of your challenge. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Your faith can be grown. Second Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 3. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting because your faith grows exceedingly. Your faith grows exceedingly. Let's rise to our feet. Your faith grows exceedingly. Your faith grows exceedingly. Your faith grows exceedingly. How many of us wants to charge the battery of their faith tonight? How many of us wants to build themselves up, pray in the Holy Ghost tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Let's lift up our hands as we begin to worship the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's lift those hands and begin to worship God tonight. And open your mouth and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost as the Spirit gives you offerings. When you do that, you are charging your batteries. Hallelujah. Somebody open your mouth and begin to pray in the heavenly language. Reka palabako shikatala Manzo kapale bako shikatala kataba Mate kele bababako shikala bradara Reka palabababako to sikayata Manzo kapala bakale bako to sh Reka talabababababa shikala bakaya dalaba Manzo katale bakatayada Rekotoli bakaya makale godosh Reko shikala baba baba, maso katala baba baba baba, pakala baba 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 baba, rekatala baba 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 baba, mako satala baka si kaya ta, reko si kala baba 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 baba, mala baba 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 baba, reko to si kala baba 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 baba, maso katala baka ya kala baba baba. Lift up your voice and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Rekato shikala baba 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 Pato shatala baba 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 Reko la baba 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 Shiatala baba 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 Pako la bako shatala baba 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 In Jesus mighty name we need to charge this battery every day for on time functionalities so that when the enemy comes you are ready in defense thank you jesus thank you jesus let's lift our hands and just worship god tonight father we give you praise thank you jesus Thank you, Jesus. Father, I declare a miracle in the life of everyone here under the sound of my voice tonight. In the name of Jesus, manifest your power in their lives. Touch somebody. I reverse tonight every evil and negative medical report in the name of Jesus. I overturn the verdict of doctors in the name of Jesus. By the time you go back, they won't find that sickness again. By the time you go back, they won't find that thing again. Everything out of order in your body 
in the name of Jesus order is restored tonight in Jesus name I decree the life of God over every organ of your body in the name of Jesus I rebuke the spirit of cancer I rebuke heart disease I rebuke lung disease I rebuke spine disease I rebuke bone disease I rebuke infertility in the name of Jesus people of God <laughs> the workings of faith is very simple just believe and live it as a lifestyle the just shall live by faith the just shall live by faith there are many things in the Bible it is what you believe that you experience and what you believe is not just what you know because knowing is information but when it begins to alter your life now i was preaching a message two days ago i said something now what is faith when what you believe dictates how you live everything you believe that does not control your lifestyle is not faith so when what you believe so, and in most cases, people won't know why you are living the way you are living. People won't understand why you are saying what you are saying. Because they can't see it. But you perceive it in your spirit. Now, it dictates your lifestyle. That is faith. Faith is in, if what you believe is only believed in your mind, it is not faith yet. Is that right? You only know that God can do it. Yet even unbelievers know. Yes, sir. Do we now say they have faith? No, sir. No. But it is faith when that thing that you believe dictates your life. Yeah. It is faith when based on what you believe, you don't react to negative stories and circumstances. I pray that the Holy Spirit will bring illumination of faith into your life. You will understand it. So when what you believe is what you live as a lifestyle, you live it. What about this story? Doesn't matter. This is what I believe. Why are you doing what you are doing? It's, I, I shared this testimony with you before. It's a, it's a good illustration. For example, you are believing God for the fruit of the womb. You carry baby things everywhere. Not minding what people will say. And now, if you put it there, you are ashamed of it, you don't believe. Are you following me? Yes. You haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. But when you display it, and what people say does not deter you, that is faith. That's illustration in one area. If you go to see a doctor and the doctor says something negative. You just throw the paper, you throw it in their trash can, you leave. That's their problem. That's not what the Bible tells me. And you even forgot what they say. You can't remember for the rest of the week. That is faith. <laughs> that is faith. That you can't even remember. You have forgotten that doctor said something. Or do you see the name of the hospital, you remember. You went there on Monday, they said something. Nonsense, and it be, it, it, it's, this is it's not just brag. It's, it's doing it because you know the Bible says the opposite. That is faith. You know what Papa said. Doctor told me you have high blood pressure. He said I don't have high blood pressure. Doctor said read it. He said there is no need. I can't have it. Not that I don't have it. I cannot have it. He said since that day, he has never looked at that thing you carry to see blood pressure. What's the name? I don't know the name. <laughs> Let me tell you something that weakens our faith. We do too much research on problems. Too more research. <laughs> here, here this. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. 
fear comes by hearing hearing the message of Satan. <laughs> Satan speaks from online. He speaks, he uses all kinds of, he and all of them. So when the doctor suggests a problem, or you feel one pain, you just Google it. Uh, I tried it. <laughs> <laughs> you just Google it. Now, do you know that, to you, for you to know this is a spiritual force, do you know that what was written there that is not happening to you before? The moment you read it, it started happening in your life. Then you read more, you read more, you, read, you say, This one is doing happening to me. This one is doing my leg. This one is doing my leg. Then faith, fear comes, fear comes, fear. <laughs> but when you research the story of where Jesus healed the sick, he raised the dead. What is arthritis? Faith comes by. So your faith just grow. You just remember he raised Lazarus from the dead. You are not afraid of arthritis. Lazarus was dead. <laughs> faith comes by people of God. The lifestyle of faith is a real lifestyle. But you have to live it. Let me say it again. It won't be long. We're going to buy a building, a church building is this San Ramon. That we are not going to be sharing with anybody. Amen. That is the lifestyle of faith. That's right. Let me tell you something that I said year 2000 by faith. For you to know that my mouth has been causing me a, a lot of problems for a long time. Good things, but people have problems with it. Year 2000, I was living in a one bedroom apartment. That one bedroom, everything is like I have this pulpit. No space, nowhere. Somebody said, that, and he's a pastor, went to Pastor Dukan and said, oh, dear family, he said, we are going to be saving money for tuition because by the time the kids start going to college, they would need money to be able to pay them. She was saying their own. She now told her, she said, you won't need that because the way this man is going, you won't need to save money. So go send kids to college. So when they told me, I said I will never have to save to send any child to college. Now hear me. Our rent was eight hundred dollars. <laughs> eight hundred dollars. See the way I was talking. That is the lifestyle of faith. That is what I saw. What do you see? Say it. Not saying it is the reason why they are not seeing the light of the day. You say it. Somebody will, will get mad and so what? He said, I believe, therefore, when I nearly came to this US, you know, for a long time, I'm sorry, right? Let me say this. I didn't know that every car on the road was financed, the new ones. <laughs> Because there was no financing where I was coming from. So somehow I found out. So for like one week, it just blew my mind. So I said, so all these people are just driving a new car. It's not their own. <laughs> because the bank owns it. If you don't pay for two more, they're going to take it. I didn't even know they repossessed then. But the Bible, say, <laughs> the Bible says, thou shalt lend unto nations, thou shalt never borrow. The borrower is a servant of the lender. So, if your creditor is talking, may you not talk anyhow. <laughs> You've just increased the interest rate. <laughs> Listen, I said something. So, it, 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 I mean, it blew me away. I said, really? So, you just have some credit, you put a thousand dollars down, you pick 30,000 car. <laughs> so, I was, <laughs> then I asked the guy, I said, but, is there a problem if somebody buys cash? He said, oh, nobody buys cash. It doesn't even make sense. I was trying to tell me, I said, but if I bring money, I didn't have 2000 then. <laughs> I said, if I bring $30,000 to buy a car, will you still take it? He said, that would be strange. I said, but will you take it? Is there a law that says you can't take it? 
He said, no, there is no law. <laughs> then I said, I am free. Now, this was, I didn't have 2,000 when I was saying this. Because I saw me ahead from what the Bible say. Amen. So you know, all of you, you have seen something. The problem is that you are not saying it. Is that right? Yes, so tell her what you saw ahead now. Tell your neighbor what you saw. What you see of yourself. Tell someone. The lifestyle that you see ahead. Help me tell someone. Tell somebody. Tell somebody. Tell her. Tell someone. Tell someone. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. Scream it in his ears. Live it as a lifestyle. Listen. Listen. Let me help you. There is a myth. There is a myth, a taboo. That people say, well, if you want to do something, if you say it out, you won't do it again. It doesn't apply to faith. It does not apply to faith. When we were in Capwell, I was shouting, we're going to move out of here. We're going to buy a building. We bought it. I was shouting, we're going to leave Oakland. I was saying, we're still going to the collision. It's only that the collision may not be in Oakland. <laughs> we, we are still going to a collision sized building. So if it is faith, it doesn't apply to it. It does not apply to it. You say it. You scream it. It becomes a lifestyle. Today I was meditating about this scripture and I was thinking about my spiritual father. I said, what kind of man is this? You can't tell him something is not working because everything is working with him. You know what I said to him when I nearly met him for the first time? He said, go to the bookstore and get one copy of each book in the bookstore. <laughs> And they actually told me at the bookstore that we have this one, we don't have this one. You come back tomorrow, then he said, have you picked your books? I said, no, sir, because they ran out of so and so. He said, no, nothing runs out in this place. There is nothing we don't have. Go back there. 1995. That we don't have, he can't hear it. He said, he wasn't joking, he wasn't smiling. He said that he was mad. He said, there is nothing we don't have here. Go back there. We have everything. When I told the staff at the bookstore, what I told them, <laughs> they were like, you've caused, you, you've caused a problem for us. I said, you told me that you come back. And I told them, you don't have. So it's a taboo. It becomes the life that you live. Don't even allow people to say it. Not that you even saying it yourself. I don't have it. Must you talk? Why you say, instead of saying I don't have it, you say I have it. The spirit to understand what you are saying. Don't say I am sick. I'm not sick. The lifestyle of faith. You are traveling. You know, I am traveling to arrive. I am traveling to come back. Thank you, Jesus. You settle all your fears. Hallelujah. The shield of faith. The shield of faith. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the force of light tonight. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. I am going to anoint everyone tonight. The only told me last month not to be doing what we were doing before. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. It represents the anointing of the Holy Ghost. 
when this oil touches your head, the every anointing in this service tonight has entered your life. So you are going home anointed in the name of Jesus. By the time you sleep and wake up, by the time you come back on Sunday, you are coming with a testimony. In the precious name of Jesus, as the oil touches your head, I want you to begin to pray and begin to channel it, especially in the areas of the things we pray for. You rebuke sickness. You say, I've been anointed against sickness, against poverty. Sickness, infirmity. You cannot survive in my body, in my life. You begin to pray as the oil comes on your head and dominion voices play something for us. Hallelujah. Brothers, that's where we are starting from. 